chapter 3. That's our, our reading for today. I want to read verses 9 through 12 uh, with you. I've got a newer Bible here. I think it's a little hard to turn. Right, verses 9 through 12. Well, honestly, I, I probably should have split this up in verses 9 and 10 today and 11 and 12 tomorrow. Um, we'll see how this goes, and it, it's possible we may, um, towards the end of this, decide to go verses 11 and 12. Uh, tomorrow. But for sure, let's look at verses 9 through 10. We'll read down to verse 12. The Bible says this, honor the Lord from your wealth, from first of all your produce. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord, or loathe his repute. For whom the Lord loves, he reproves, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. You know, brethren, every good thing in our life comes from God. Our, our blessings, they originate with God. And brethren, that, that, that sounds so simple. But so often we forget this. Brethren, we would do well to stress this and emphasize this to ourselves daily. And certainly uh, those of us who are parents, we need to teach this truth to our children. But, but more than that, we, we need to show them um, this in our life. You know, Solomon tells his son here, you honor the Lord from your wealth. Other versions render that, honor the Lord with your possessions. He goes on to say, here, do this with the first of all your produce, the first fruits. You know, rather than obviously, the big idea here is we need to give everything to the Lord first. And when you think about the context here of what we covered last week, this idea of, of trusting the Lord with all our hearts, one of the ways we, that we show and prove that we're truly trusting the Lord with all of our hearts is we give to God first. We give God the best, not the financial leftovers, and not the leftovers in any area of our life for that matter. This idea of honoring the Lord, here carries the idea of some sacrifice. As we give to the Lord, this may mean that we're not always able to do the things that we would like or that we would want. We're going to fill it when we're putting the Lord first at times. It's sacrifice. And rather, let's face it, um, that's just not something we like to do for all of us. That's hard. You know, Solomon wants his son to adopt a perspective that, that recognizes that God is the giver of these things but also that he gives to God, honors God, anticipating that God is going to continue to give to him, continue to provide as he has in the past. You see, when we trust God to continue to bless us, it makes giving to him, it makes giving our best, giving first to him, rather than it makes it far easier. But that takes trusting that he's going to continue to provide for us. You know, certainly under the old law, the, the Jews would bring to the Lord the first of their flocks, the first fruits of their field. And, and this would look, certainly show and acknowledge God's goodness, but also his sovereignty. They're trusting him to take care of them. I, I know I sound like a, a broken record, and certainly I appreciate it to myself. Again, God the giver. But then we should be quick to give our best back to him in all ways. And certainly this means we use the things that he's providing us as good stewards to his glory, as we strive to forth further the borders of his kingdom, as we strive to, to strengthen our brethren, as we use our blessings by way of hospitality to, to better know and to better serve others. He, he says in verse 10, so your bonds will be filled with plenty, fast, overflow with new wine. But certainly we don't give to God in some greedy way with the heart of God. Uh, a greedy way with our hearts that, that, that God's going to give us more if I do this, that this is some kind of transactional thing, or if I give this much, God's going to turn around and, and he's going to give in return this percentage, or he's going to make me rich. Obviously, that's, that's not the idea. That's not the heart of, the servant, of, of a servant. Not the heart of Solomon is promoting your servant. But I do think the idea and the promise, if we put God first, if we put his kingdom first, God's certainly going to take care of us. God's going to ensure that, that we have everything we need. Brethren, is that not our experience with God? It's my experience with God. Is that not what Jesus said in Matthew 6, beginning verse 25, down to about verse 34, seeking his kingdom first and, and all of these things, all of these things, that physical things that we worry about, that God, that, that he'll take care of those things? In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6, as, as Paul challenged the Corinthians to give bountifully by way of help for the brethren, in verse 6 he says, now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. He says in verse 7, each one must do as he's purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. It's written, he who scattered abroad and gave to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Brother, we need to hear this. 
We need to trust our God to take care of us. And when we do that, it will free us up to give to him first, to give our best, to use our blessings for God to, to strengthen others, knowing that God is honored and glorified in this. Certainly, I can do better in this, and I suspect you as well. Now, on the first day of the week, we're commanded to give back a portion of that in which we've been blessed, remembering that God does love a, a, a cheerful giver. And certainly, we, we ought to examine uh, our giving back to the Lord. Um, but let's do some self-examination just of all areas of our life. Number one, let's ask the question, am I first giving to God? Is he first? Am I giving God my best? Am I using my wealth and, and my possessions that God is blessing me with to serve others, to, to, to strengthen uh, others? And then number four, do, do I trust God? Let's examine our giving. Let's examine our mindset towards our stuff. Let's examine our stewardship of these things that God is blessing us with. Are we using it to our glory or his? You see, that's a personal question that only you can answer and only I can answer. Let's stop here this morning. We'll pick up in verse 11 tomorrow. We'll consider the discipline of the Lord. There's plenty that we can talk about there. Um, but let's ask ourselves those questions this morning. Um, really good stuff here. Honor the Lord from your wealth from the first of all your produce so your barns will be filled with plenty your vats will flow overflow with, with new wine let's pray together father in heaven father for another day we are so thankful father you bless us in so many ways certainly father we are so blessed as sinners by way of your grace and mercy and sending your son to this earth to die on the cross for our sins father we certainly are indebted to you and we praise you for that glorify you and father we're just so thankful for your grace and for your mercy Father, we're also thankful for all of our daily provisions. Father, we are so very blessed materially. Father, you have blessed us in abundance. And certainly, Father, we recognize that these good things are from you. And Father, give us the wisdom to use them in such a way that would glorify you, Father. May we always put you and your kingdom first. Father, we pray that as a result of, of these good things that you bless us with, Father, that others would be strengthened and encouraged. Father, help us just to be better stewards of, um, of the things that you have blessed us with. Father, we're mindful of those who uh, are, are sick right now. So many are sick with COVID. And, uh, others have been exposed and quarantined. And Father, just so many frustrations come with this, Father. We just ask you to be with us, to help us to be patient. Help us just continue to do your will, Father, not be distracted by so many things around us. Father, we ask for opportunities uh, this very day to tell others what you have done for us. Father, as a congregation, we challenged ourselves this past Lord's Day to, to tell one soul what Jesus has done for us, what you have done for us by way of your grace and mercy. Father, give us the strength and the courage to do that today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.